What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Geek Weekly, the show where I read the news all week so you have more time to play video games. I am Finn, and uh, let's just jump into it. But before we do, I do have a little bit of house cleaning. Um, the first thing I wanted to mention is thank you all so much for subscribing. I know I said this last week. I might say this every week. It's amazing that we've only been doing this for a week, and we are, as of this recording, four subscribers away from 200 people. That's a lot of people. I know there's a ton of YouTube channels out there that have thousands and thousands of subscribers, but to me, the fact that we have enough uh, enough people subscribed to our channel that if we were in a building, they'd have to call the fire marshal, that is actually a pretty cool thing. So thank you guys for jumping on board this crazy ride and joining us as we talk about all things gaming. The other little bit of house cleaning here is that, uh, you know, when you start out a YouTube channel, it's kind of hard to focus on one thing. You want to kind of do everything. But we've kind of decided to make our channel specific about, about gaming and then even more specifically, mainly about Square Enix and role playing games. Uh, we, Square Enix has been a huge part of our gaming lives, not just Final Fantasy. Deus Ex is one of my favorite franchises. There's all kind of uh, Project Octopath Traveler was one of my favorite games, and then when it became Octopath Traveler, Bravely Default and Bravely Second. There's so many games. I could make a whole video on just all of the games that we played by Square Enix that have been hugely impactful on our lives. So I think that is going to be the focus of our channel going forward. But as you guys have already shown that you're comfortable doing, let us know in the comments what you think about that. If you just want us to focus on that or if there's some other topics that you'd like to see, we would really appreciate you guys letting us know what you want to see. That way we can keep bringing you the best content week over week. The other little bit of house cleaning here. Speaking of Square Enix, as many of you have kind of called me out for in the comments, I have never played Final Fantasy IX. So... <laughs> with our YouTube channel starting, we've also started up both Twitch and we started getting on the social media and all that kind of stuff. We started up a Twitter. On our Twitch, I'm going to be starting my first playthrough of Final Fantasy IX starting next Tuesday. And there'll be a link in either a card or the description as my technical skills allow to uh, take you to my Twitch where you can sign up and watch both of us play. So uh, really excited to start Final Fantasy IX. Uh, it might be a good thing that I never played it because now we can enjoy it together. Uh, that might be me overcompensating for the fact that I missed what is one of almost everyone's favorite Final Fantasy games, but that's neither here nor there. Join me next Tuesday, and we'll have a time in the description once we kind of nail down a time. But join me on Twitch next Tuesday, and I'll be starting Final Fantasy IX. And then the last thing is, uh, we're talking about streaming. Uh, Tokyo Bunny would also like to start streaming as well. And she was going to leave it up to you what you'd like to see her play first. We're playing so many games right now that we're really kind of curious what everyone else would like to see streamed or what you guys would like to join us as we play. So uh, there'll be another poll somewhere in the description or in a card or something like that. Maybe one of, one of you commenters can help me figure out where to put all this stuff that we are trying to do in the videos here. But there'll be a poll somewhere where you can click on a little box and tell Tokyo what to play. And I'm sure she will play that for you. So yeah, uh, really excited to have you all along on this journey. First news item for the week is kind of a big deal for me. I, I, I loved Sega when I was a kid, but uh, my mom made me decide on either Nintendo or Sega. And when I decided on Nintendo, I, we were kind of a Nintendo household going forward from there. So I only owned a Sega Genesis for a little while. Uh, but Sega has announced two things. One is they've announced Sega Classics coming to the Switch, the PC, and the Xbox uh, with over 50 classic Sega Genesis games. So that's kind of a big deal for anybody that, like me, maybe missed some of those games or for those of you that just want to go back and re-experience them for the first time on modern hardware like the Switch or a PC. Uh, this is a great way to get into those games. But Sega also announced another kind of retro gaming platform that seems to be all the rage these days, and that is the Sega Genesis Mini, a mini console. It's kind of like a little itty-bitty Sega Genesis. Um, something that kind of surprised me was that it comes with the classic three-button controller rather than the six-button controller that I remember from when I was a kid. I swear I had a six-button controller, though a lot of news articles I read said that the six-button controller was only available internationally. I could have sworn later in the Genesis's life cycle they had a six-button controller that was available, but maybe that's my nostalgia glasses on there. A couple of games have been announced for the Sega Genesis Mini. Altered Beast, Echo the Dolphin, Toe Jam and Earl, Gunstar Heroes, and Shining Force are the games that have been announced for the Genesis Mini, and I'm sure more will be forthcoming the closer to the release date. Pricing information and release date have been, um, they're not released yet, but I'm sure within the next couple of weeks here, we'll start to get some of that information. So really exciting. I, I'm loving these retro consoles. You know, Tokyo Bunny and I got a Super Nintendo Classic. Uh, we didn't get, we got the NES Classic. 
Well, we've been playing a lot of retro games, as you guys can see, going back and playing some of these games that we either missed when we were kids or didn't have time to play. So I, I love this retro gaming environment right now, especially with a lot of AAA titles right now being either mediocre or disappointing. Going back and playing games that you know are good, that have had time to get vetted, that a lot of people have either guides for or um, strategies for online. Uh, I, I'm loving this retro environment right now. So the Sega Genesis Mini kind of capitalizes on that, and I'm all for it. Another big announcement is uh, Iron Man. Iron Man game has been announced for PSVR, which means exactly 12 people are going to play it. Uh, no, all kidding aside, this is actually kind of a big deal. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like Disney and Marvel have been reducing the amount of licensing they were doing, uh, especially in the wake of some of these controversies, like um, Marvel Heroes recently got shut down because of some controversies with their leadership and the way that they were monetizing the game. You know, EA and Battlefront, that's been a really big controversy in terms of loot boxes. First, they were added, they were designed as part of the game, then they were forced to remove them because they were so controversial. Um, so I think Disney and Marvel are starting to get a little bit more protective of their license. So to hear them announce that they're giving Iron Man one of the first um, Disney Marvel VR experiences to a smaller developer is, for me, both an encouraging thing and then also something that makes me a little bit nervous. You know, the, the fact that they're doing it on PSVR and not as a full-fledged Iron Man game means that in the future, if it isn't popular, if it doesn't sell, they can just write it off as an experiment and say, ah, you know, it wasn't a flagship title, as opposed to putting out a full-on Iron Man game, a full single-player Spider-Man-like experience for the PlayStation or for major consoles. Um, that's what I would have liked to see. But uh, I kid about it, but putting it on the VR means that not many people are going to play it. And even if it does gain traction... Not a ton of people have a PSVR to even play it, so I don't know what their goal was with this. Maybe it was a ploy from Sony to sell more PSVRs, or it was a ploy from Disney to try and get Sony to maybe pay for some of the development costs or something. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that that actually happened. I, I don't know for a fact, but it's curious that they would put it on this platform instead of making it a full-on title. So something to watch there. You know, Hopefully this does turn into a thing. Hopefully it's a good game, and it makes VR a lot more palatable for the mainstream audience, but... Do I think that's going to happen? Probably not. Last but not least, um, kind of big news from Sony. I know we talked about Sony last week, and uh, they've been sort of on this anti-consumer bend for the last couple of months here. This sort of feels like the same thing. Now, the they just recently announced some changes to their refund policy and their pre-order refund policy in particular. You can now refund pre-orders and purchases under certain criteria. And what those certain criteria are, are within 14 days as long as you haven't downloaded or streamed the content. The same policy also applies to uh, season passes and promotional bundles. So on the surface, this looks like a great thing, right? Oh, Sony's giving you refunds on digital purchases. This is awesome. They're trying to make it more like Steam. They're trying to make it more like other digital platforms. They're trying to make it more like actual physical games, where if you haven't opened the game, you can take it back within 14 days. But really, if you dig deeper, uh, this doesn't really make that much sense. And it seems like it's just a token effort to get the fans on board. Because the one thing that kind of caught my attention was within 14 days, as long as you haven't streamed or downloaded the content, right? So one big caveat on that is if you have automatic downloads on, it immediately makes you ineligible for a refund. Because that game, one byte of data from that game has touched your PlayStation. So now you can't get a refund. So they're asking you to turn off features that they advertised as benefits to get other benefits with refunds and pre-orders. This doesn't make sense to me. This is not the way that most gamers would use their devices. Most gamers just want to set it and forget it, right? That's the point of turning on those automatic downloads. But if you know that they're going to make you ineligible for a refund, and so many games these days are coming out as games as a service where they're either broken at launch or it takes years and years for us to get the full amount of content to make it a full game... None of this makes sense to me. So I hope Sony listens to the fan feedback just like I hope like they're going to listen to the fan feedback last week. They're already going the wrong direction by removing PS Vita and PS3 games from PSN, which is just making the service completely unpalatable for just about everybody. I'll talk more about that in a second, but I just don't feel like this is a good move, especially when so many games are coming out these days, either, like I mentioned, broken or just not completed. Uh, Anthem, for example, No Man's Sky, for example, where they want those loot box dollars to continue development on the game. This is unacceptable on both sides one is these games as a service are just not compelling for me i just don't want to continue to pay for a game that is not finished at launch 
unless it's like an MMO or something where we know we're getting good content, but we've already gotten a full game experience. And then on Sony's side, it just feels like kind of a token flag waving to get fans to stop talking about these refunds and things like that. Hey, look, we offered you refunds. Stop talking about it. No, this is still not acceptable, Sony. And it's making it hard for me to continue considering myself a Sony first gamer when PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, all of these other offerings are giving superior solutions to these problems and giving you superior game options. You know, I mentioned Xbox earlier. Xbox Game Pass is so superior to the PlayStation Network, and I don't think there's any controversy about that. Xbox Game Pass, you can get dozens of games. I want to say hundreds of games, but I'd have to check. I I just signed up for the trial myself, and Sea of Thieves is on there. Forza is on there. Gears of War, the entire series is on there. The entire Halo series is on there, including Halo Wars, where PSN... If you weren't a subscriber the month that game was offered, tough luck. You can never go back and get that game. You might get it at a discount or something like that. But this is what I mean when I say that Sony, disappointingly, is being anti-consumer with a lot of their policies. I don't know if it's a financial thing. I don't know if it's just that they're circling the wagons because they need more development dollars or something. I don't know what it is. The PS Plus games for April were so disappointing. The Surge, which is like um, kind of like a Souls-like sci-fi game, which apparently was pretty good. But Conan Exiles, really? And, and no Vita games at this point, no PS3 games at this point. So anybody who really loved their Vita, they're just out of luck. You're just paying for a subscription for no reason at that point to continue having access to games that you downloaded months ago. Uh, so again, I, I hate to end it on this note just like I did last week, but Sony, come on, get your act together, guys. The fans are telling you what they want, and you are just completely ignoring them. Nintendo is listening, and look at how it's resulting in Nintendo Switch Online subscriptions, game sales. PlayStation, I don't know, man. PlayStation games still command a premium price, and it seems like sales are dwindling, where Nintendo Switch games are anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks. And I know me personally, I have no problem dropping $60 on a Nintendo Switch game because I know I'm going to get a good experience. I know I'm going to get a fully completed game. And I know that I can take that game with me or play it at home at console level quality. So Sony's really got to up their game and figure something out here. It pains me to say this as somebody that has always been a Sony fan going back to the original PlayStation. But come on, Sony, these anti-consumer practices are not the way to win in this market. And with that, everyone, that's going to be the news for this week. Again, I really appreciate you guys coming on this journey with us, and I hope these news uh, items are really informative for you. Again, the goal of this is so that I sift through all of these random news articles so that you have more time throughout the week to play games. But again, I'd love for you guys to join me playing games as well. Uh, on tw- Look me up on Twitch. I'll have a link in the description. Look me up on Twitter now. Uh, I only have about 10 tweets, so don't expect too much on there. But uh, really appreciate you guys being here. Until next week, this is Finn. Signing off.